go. Welcome, everybody, to the final concert in our Niente Forte virtual season 11. Thanks to everybody who is joining us this afternoon. We have some very exciting music to share with you today, coming from a truly world-class ensemble that's, that's joining us from France. Final concert in our Niente Forte virtual season Ooh. 11. Thanks to everybody who is joining Ooh, hold on one second here, because I'm getting some feedback of me hearing myself. So let me turn, mute some of this stuff out. All right, that's better. Sorry, my apologies. Um, before I give Ensemble Linnea um, a proper introduction, I want to make sure that I thank and recognize our sponsors, um, the National Performance Network, the Jazz and Heritage Foundation, the Tulane University School of Liberal Arts, and the Tulane University um, Depart Newcomb Department of Music have been instrumental in making sure that our season can happen and do the right things. Oh, it was Max's fault. That's what it was. He was like listening to the broadcast on the same thing and it was feeding back into the Zoom. So I'm going to blame him, which is probably the reason why he left. <laughs> thanks, Max. Um, so thanks very much to our sponsors for all of that. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to thank our donors, our supporters, and our fans and the community. Um, the arts profession has been and continues to be impacted very heavily by the COVID-19 pandemic and the direct support that the Niente Forte community has given performers and composers both in our community but also across the globe has been very impactful in allowing them to continue doing what they love uh, for a profession. We'd love for all of you to join our community and our mission to champion contemporary music in New Orleans. So please like and subscribe to all of our social media, follow the people that you love in the arts around the world and make sure that you support them because it is very important and very impactful for us to make sure that we can still do what we want to do. If you want to donate to Niente Forte directly, then you can go to nienteforte.com slash donate. At the very end of this concert, we are going to have question and answer sessions. So if you have any questions that you would like to ask of our lovely ensemble Linnea that's joined us here today, or of Max, who uh, was causing some technical issues, but I think has figured it out since then, um, then please feel free to throw it into the chat. Um, we will take all of that stuff at the very end and uh, answer those at the very end of the concert. Um, so feel free to engage with us. Please engage with us and let us know um, what you think of all the stuff that's happening today. And without further ado, I would love to introduce to you now um, Ensemble Linnea. They are an internationally renowned music ensemble that was founded in 1998 by Jean-Philippe Wurtz. They have been regularly invited to play at music festivals and concerts all over the world. Um, they are true new music ambassadors, encouraging and supporting young composers by commissioning new works, organizing composition and performance masterclasses, as well as concerts. Its unique multicultural approach focuses on developing collaborations with ensembles from all over the world and exploring repertoires across all continents. They've also set up its own summer academy of contemporary music in Strasbourg. So um, everybody on the Linnea and Jean-Philippe particularly, thanks very much for being a part of this and for being a part of our Niente Forte season. Hey, thank, thank you first uh, for having us. It's, uh, it's, a great, it's great fun to... to to be there tonight and to interact with you, and we're very happy to present the show and to present the, the pieces. Absolutely. If you could, um, let me know, before we actually get into some of the music itself and start to present the works, um, tell me how this whole thing got started. You founded this in 1998. Like, what, what prompted you to do this in the first place, and what, do you, what would you say about the growth that you've seen with Ensemble Linnea over the past couple of decades? Right. Uh, I was a music student, and, you know, I... I been always connected to the present, to the future. It's it's a, it's a need, it's a vital need I have to be connected to the news, to what's going on in the world, to what the future is bringing, etc. So it goes on with my practice of, of, of music uh, and very logically, and I never could switch and, and split the things. And um, so I would say very naturally around the ensemble when I still was a student. And uh, then you know uh, it 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 grew slowly and with difficulty because it's a, it's a very difficult work, let's say, to improve an ensemble, you have nothing, you have, to, you have no money, you have no room, no instruments, no players, no music. <laughs> so, uh, but that's exciting, you know, uh, creating the thing from, from nothing, it's, it's something really inspiring. So you meet people, they help you, you go, you go further, you do nice music, you, you start to play nice halls, and you want to progress because the, the goal is to play music very well and to advocate the composers as well as possible. So this is the story, actually. And it leads us to, to, to many uh, experiences, adventures, and including to Louisiana. And I'm very excited, very excited about that because I came to 
you were in the show years ago and I'm very excited to go there again. Absolutely. And do you, what, what do you find the most attractive about the new music itself? Like, like music is something, like new music is something that, that I, I think about as being something that people on the inside of it that really know it understand how exciting it is and how collaborative and how intimate it can be, especially when you're working with living composers. Like how, what, how does that, what does all that stuff mean to you or to anybody else that's on this, that, that's here today? Like what, what really drives you to be new music performers or new music advocates? And for me, very quickly, because I want to, to let the other speak, mirror of our time, it's a testimony of our, uh, the, the time of, the, of our era, what the, the times we go through, and it's, it's especially relevant now that we know an event that is uh, constantly, uh, the, the people, the same event is constantly all the, the whole world is the first time we live with actually, and uh, meeting, meeting people, meeting human beings, having different experience, views, opinions, inspirations. This all makes us richer in a way. And this this is driving me very strongly. Very good. Anybody else want to make a comment about uh, your own relationship with new music or as performers or as composers or anything? That's okay if you don't. That's fine. And we are also uh, here to have one of the one of the composers of the actual uh, works that we're going to be having here today. Uh, Zinep um, is here also on this Zoom. Zinep, do you have, have anything to say? Like, what was it, what's it like having this, uh, being a part of this ensemble or being a part of this experience with Linnea and what they've been able to do to help you realize your dream with, with the music that you're trying to create? Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it was an amazing opportunity to be able to still make this piece happen during the pandemic of Ensemble Linnea. And I'm really looking forward to like today and this summer when I will get to hear the music in real <laughs> life. But yeah, I, I've met Jean Philippe in a, in a composition masterclass many years ago in France when I was a you know, student. I'm still a student, I'm doing a doctoral degree, but yeah, um, I'm happy that this has led to this new project, which I'm really excited about. And I'm so happy to have worked with the amazing musician yeah very good absolutely and i'm sure that they're very happy to be able to play your music as well go ahead jean philippe i want to add a, a, a quickly a point it typically the work with zenep was a positive fruit of the pandemic because um we did with her and with other composers as well a work that, that we usually don't take so much time to do it was so easy to make these zooms meetings you know that we uh and for each new piece we started to do okay let's do a meeting with the composer and you know whatever there's no music we don't know but let's do a meeting first let's meet and talk and we'll see what happens then and it gives a fully other dimension to the to the work and typically this piece has benefited from this so um i hope that really that we have learned that um we can uh, use these tools to communicate and to elaborate the the new pieces on a longer time which is really brings yeah, absolutely. And that's something that's been a common thread throughout this entire season when I ask the, these kind of questions about the w with the performers that that you, you think about a lot of music that we perform as performers, we perform and it, it's usually um, people uh, not new music, people of the past. You're just trying to interpret yourself what somebody who has now been long dead is on the page and, and you don't really have that interaction or that uh, the ability to be able to make something that is truly a collaborative kind of process like it's not just about the performers just trying to guess what the composer does or how, how all the analyst is it's now oh let's let's work together to try to make this piece into something that's best for not just the composer but also for the performing ensemble or the performing soloist and and really engage in that way and there's a, that sort of conversation and that sort of ability to to really impact living composers is something that is uh, that I don't think a lot of people necessarily know that like when I think about writing a piece or when Max in the last concert he he wrote that piece um, for Carlos and I, I like to say that he didn't really write the piece for Carlos as much as he wrote the piece with Carlos because without Carlos and his back and forth interaction then the piece would not have been able to be realized in the way that it, that it has so having that resource of having ensembles like what Linnea is trying to do or, or soloists and performers that are really advocates for new music around the world it is so important to living music and is really what makes uh, new music so exciting to me and, and, I, and I love that aspect of it so um, 
I don't want to take too long before we actually get into the actual music. I had a few other questions, but if we wanted to kind of fill this stuff out, then we can do that at the very end. So I think that for now, um, we can kind of go into the concert itself. Um, for the concert, we're going to be presenting uh, three works that Ensemble Linnea had prepared for us in conjunction with the studio um, La Poulie. Forgive me if I pronounce this incorrectly, incorrectly the, the studio La Poulie production. Um, we'll be doing some brief discussion to introduce each piece. And then after, again, after the concert is done, if you have any questions, and I am monitoring the chat, um, and someone said hi to you, Max, uh, someone named Brandon. Um, I am monitoring the chat for any questions. So if you have anything that you would like to ask of all of these people on this panel, then please feel free to throw it into it, and we will talk about it and answer those questions at the very end. So why don't we talk about this first piece before we actually play it, the Masada? Yeah, so uh, I don't know. Jean-Philippe, do you have anything in particular that you would like to say about this uh, first piece that we're going to present here? Uh, I think let's enjoy the music. I mean, we talked a lot, so maybe we can go back. So. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So let's, let's, let's put the piece on there, and then after the piece is done, then we'll have the opportunity to talk about it. So this is the Masado here. Give me one second. Please enjoy.
All right, we are back. Thanks so much. I, we got some feedback from somebody that said that they could not actually hear uh, Linnea in the Zoom call as opposed to um, only hearing me. If, the, if that is true, then please make sure that I know that in the chat and I can try to work with the tech setup of that. Um, but let's see if we can get that to happen. So uh, let's talk about this piece a little bit. Uh, Jean-Philippe, do you have anything that you would like to try to say about that piece now? And while you're talking, I'll just kind of see if I can make sure that we can actually hear you um, and deal with the technical side of it if we can. Well, the piece is composed by Misato Mojizuki, who is a, a Japanese composer, and she studied in France uh, in the 90s, I would say. She's also a friend. I, I met her actually where I am now, at Royaumont, the Royaumont Foundation, in 92 or something like this. Um, and about the piece, I'd like to to let uh, marie andré uh, talk about, uh, about it, maybe. Yeah, yeah thank you. And I would like to say some few words about the piece. Then Pazapa is the name of the piece for bassoon and accordion. is similar to a series of ternary and binary dances linked and sometimes superimposed on the two instruments. One will find a pulsation close to the rhythm of the walk. This idea is a wink to the sentence of the writer Paul Auster. While walking, the thought also advances like the body, step by step. And we can hear this step all the time, sometimes together, sometimes not together, from the beginning to the end, and different kind of rhythms. But all the time we have these steps, steps sorry, for the, uh, from the beginning to the end of the piece. And that's the idea from the composer. Very good. Thanks so much for that. We did get another hello from uh, Jonathan. Thanks for joining us, Jonathan. Um, hope you're enjoying what we have so far. Let's move on to the next piece that we have on this concert. We'll just let this next piece um, play for a little bit, um, and then we'll have the opportunity to talk about that after um, this performance is done. So let me cue that up.
are back. Thanks. Hope every, hope everybody enjoyed that. That I, I I have to say I personally really adore that piece and I really adore that performance. So um, congratulations and thanks very much for for that great for that great work. Um, do you want to say anything about this particular piece and and talk a little bit about it or about the composer? Yes, with pleasure. Thank you for listening to to the recording. Um, so the piece is called Atom Lead by Toshio Hosokawa, a Japanese composer. So Atom Lead is a, a song of breathing. And the piece actually starts with the, the physical action of exhaling, inhaling, inhaling. So the sound of inhaling is also included, I mean, involved really as a material, musical material. And this um, uh, let's say the first physical movement that every human being makes when we are born is also a, a, the, a starting point of a line. So exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, in, inhaling. This is a line. It becomes a circle. And the, the circle becomes a time. And the time, on this time, he creates this uh, the word that he uses is the calligraphy of sound. So in calligraphy, in one line, there is, we say, if I'm, it, it, it is said that uh, in one line, there is the beginning of the life and the development of the life and the end, it just it disappears. And so the entire piece is based on this idea. It's this very horizontal line and uh, vertical uh, energy which goes really in the depth and in from this depth uh, comes the voice of the performer i personally like <coughs> very much this piece that i worked a lot with the composer himself and i have to say that it it is also every time a big challenge because i really have to go to my limits i mean like physical limits and yeah, it's always a new um, experience uh, every time I perform uh, the piece. Absolutely, it's one of it's one of those pieces that that really takes you. Um, for me, it really takes you on its journey because of the way that it evolves and and, and it uh, uh, slowly and and really does emulate that kind of capturing of inhaling and exhaling. It's it's. It, it draws you in and uh, it like the, the time goes by and it, it doesn't really feel like like I, I almost could see the piece as being twice as long or three times as long and still still be something that feels like it's still only like three or four minutes have gone by like you, you lose track of time and you get really immersed in it and that's, that, that's one of those things that a piece that makes a piece really wonderful it's a, if it's able to achieve that so congratulations and, and thank you again for that no, uh, what I what I <clears throat> think is so amazing in this piece is it's I think it's quite an an old piece. It's not very recent. How, how, when was it composed, Keiko? Actually, like fifteen years ago, or yeah, I don't. I remember seeing it and looking it up. I don't remember exactly when it was, but that sounds about right. Yeah. Any, anyway, um, um, what I think is amazing is that well, most of the composers in France, for example, at this time were mostly busy with material questions and Hosokawa is completely uh, busy with uh, spiritual and, and philosophical questions <laughs> and I think it's really amazing because now most of composers have understood that the material is, is one thing but okay uh, you know uh, um, it's it's uh, choosing the stones or the paint or whatever that you need to build something but it's not the goal in itself the goal is somewhere else and I could say that, that Hosoka was very much in advance on, on this point of view. Yeah, absolutely. This was written in '97. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sweet. Well, thanks for that again. Uh, we have one more piece that we have uh, to present on this concert. 
that was written. It's going to get its virtual premiere, or it's, uh, I guess if you want to call it, by um, Zinap. So let's give the opportunity here to listen to that piece. And then at the very end of it, then we will have a conversation about that and then also close out with any further questions or discussions. Again, um, if you have any questions and feel free to throw them in, uh, I don't see a lot of questions out there right now. So uh, I might just kind of do some stuff off the cuff myself, but we'll see what happens. But for right now, um, let's listen to uh, Zinep's work.
All right, we are back. Congratulations, Zinep. I hope that uh, you had the opportunity to hear that and are, are happy with that performance and what they were, Linnea was able to do for you. Congratulations. Thank you. It was amazing to hear it. Also, like, live right now. and uh, Absolutely. Is there, a, is there anything in particular that you would like to say about the work and, and how you went about the creation of it and what you did with it? Yeah, I mean, as John Philip also said, it has been in creation for a long time because we talked about doing this piece uh, a while back and then it got postponed and I had more time to work on it and come back to it in different moments. Uh, and yeah, I'm, it's, it's really nice to then come back to it and hear it now and I can actually reflect on what I was thinking when I was composing and it. And yeah, it's very much about colors and timbres. I was kind of inspired by this organ type writing and I tried to construct this different palettes of timbres from these three instruments that mimic certain organ timbres and like referencing that music really subtly in the harmony or certain gestures and certain motifs that I'm using and yeah what a beautiful performance so thank you so much <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely congratulations on that there's there's a few people in the chat that commented about how you were able to achieve um, those colors and the orchestration. I, I really wanted to point out too, like again, b before this broadcast happened, um, I, I said to uh, Marie, who was first on the call, that I didn't really necessarily know much about accordion. And, and I just really complimented her on, on her playing of the accordion and just kind of what, what she could do with it. And I think that you, in, in my opinion, you really leveraged like the versatility, I think, of the accordion to be able to have that conversation between the clarinet and also um, with the, both with the low voice and with the high voice. And uh, th that's quite something that really spotlights, I think, not just all three instruments individually, but the, the versatility of the accordion in particular. So it's quite something. Definitely, yeah. I was so lucky to have workshops with the musicians beforehand. And yes, Murray like, did make my kind of crazy ideas come true and happen. And I think it's, it's yeah, it's I mean, really a privilege. Did, did you know much about that before going into that? Or was it pretty much like a, let's see if this is possible, like I have no idea if it's possible or not, and then uh, and then found out that more was possible than you thought, or the things that you had to throw out? Or um, Full disclosure, I have done like a workshop on accordion before, and at Impulse Festival many years ago, so I did have an idea, but it was, it was good to like dive deeper into it for the purposes of this piece, and the instrumentation really spoke to me in that way, and yes... Yeah, very good. We have a, a somebody that's um, in the chat is asking a question of you actually as an ep of that piece. Let me see what it says here. Oh, she just answered. So I guess that was the question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, he was wondering if you were t testing things with software at all, but uh, or, or with a mix at all. But I assume that a lot of that was just through your own experience um, and just kind of dealing with live instruments and doing a lot of collaboration back and forth. So definitely. Yeah, very good. Um, very lucky too to have uh, such a beautiful piece, and I can re I could really know notice uh, seeing the process from outside in a way um, that the the sounds uh, have been really developed that's through the through the workshops, and that's that's so cool to see to to hear it today. And um, what is very beautiful in this piece is that as as one listener mentioned that the the, the, the group is quite small, but the sound is very big and rich. And you may think uh, that you know these instruments like bassoon or, or an accordion they are quite simple instruments even a little bit naive right or you may think but if you dig really in the possibilities you found these amazing sounds that Zenep has done so beautifully very complex chords and uh, we are very um, excited to work even more deeply on the performance of the, of the piece uh, that will happen in summer in Darmstadt um, is that going to be, and I assume that's going to be in a, a live venue. Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, if if the world uh, has become normal again, it yeah. will be uh, in at the Darmstadt Festival on August third, and uh, we'll be very excited to be physically together this time. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think, especially too, because because we all know that that even in this context, even in a good professional studio recording, hearing it through an online kind of um, medium you end up losing some of the ambiance of the piece that you can get out of that live performance. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be a very exciting and very successful performance to be able to see, hear that and see that in a live space and get all that stuff and all the overtones and all that kind of color like happening all at the same time. And uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Congratulations and good luck with the performance and the continuing success of that piece um, through the future. 
Absolutely. I don't think we have any other questions or anything in the actual chat. I guess I guess I can uh, talk, uh, maybe ask of you um, how, um, just in general, how the pandemic ha has really affected your ability to for Linnea or for the individual performers to, to really work in this past year. And if it's if it's anything different from in, in France or um, versus what we've seen here in the States or anywhere else that you know about in the world, like have you been able to actually do about the same but have you had little impact some impact a great impact anybody no shy people here i mean if, if you were able to put out some 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 work then uh, through this past year then i think that that's really good well, I, I, I took too much <laughs> so. and maybe i can say something so i'm i'm living in germany and huh. um i have the feeling that uh, it's very different how uh, the different countries um, did uh, a politics uh, uh, with the pandemic so like in swiss is um, they are still they they have concerts and in germany nothing so it's it's uh, it's um, um, I would love to 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 play in in Swiss uh, in Switzerland because um, there is possible to play and in Germany nothing and this is very very hard for me. So um, um, they don't uh, how's it? Uh, uh, we are quiet uh, all musicians and we can't do anything. Okay, we can of course. Uh, uh do s live streaming and this is very nice but but uh, we can play uh, live concerts and this is very very hard for me yeah i completely understand that i mean for i, I know that when we talk to to carlos because I, I don't know where everybody is based but when we talked to carlos uh, who was in portugal at the time that they were pretty um they were pretty low on the totem pole for for being coming coming out of that as opposed to other um as opposed to other places and and uh mm -hmm. i i just kind of i don't know like what what's it like i guess in in wherever you are like uh is there an end in sight or is it is it kind of still you don't know exactly what's going to happen like how, how are the vaccinations kind of rolling out and how's that affecting your plans for the future yeah. it's very very difficult to, to yeah to see in the future so to, to play in uh, concerts uh, i'm i'm so i i'm um, happy if we can play in darmstadt so in august but uh, yeah actually you don't know what, what uh, will happen and this is very hard yeah no absolutely i understand that yeah, it's it's the situation. So we we just today uh, in in France there were so some announcements. Uh, so we see kind of a beginning of uh, not the end. We don't know about that, but uh, some better lights because uh, things are going to start to happen again from mid of May, slowly with very small audiences, you know. Um, but uh, it's still a strong sign. So we're kind we're kind of happy today of seeing this happening we, even if we don't know how long it's going to last and, uh, and it's been a very special time of course uh, as I said it has also in, uh, allowed things that never happened before I hope that these things will go on I hope that uh, you know taking care of the planets that uh, seem to be kind of a sudden consciousness uh, which is not so related in a way but uh, it happened in a way I, I hope it's going to be the case that also uh, going on and uh, our whole the whole future of um, this question right we nobody's really sure that we are going to find uh, the life of before again and uh, also we don't know if it's if it's if we wish to i mean you know um, it's it's a big uh, it's the moment of a big um, questioning of on our habits and way of life so well let's let's take this as a chance as well absolutely we, we so absolutely i mean I, I think that the as as tragic and as um problematic that the pandemic ha has been and it, it's it's quite something to me it, it provides an opportunity i feel because we've all across the globe 
have have had to deal with it in such a a uh, you would hope to be a, a, as much of a unified way as possible. And and clearly that's not completely true. Every every country, every area of the world has um, either chosen to or has had to deal with this in very different ways but we're, we all understand it in a way that previously not everybody in the globe could understand the problems of like one area versus another i think in the way that this has really been able to put for, forth and i think that that provides an opportunity for us to think about things um whether it's arts related or if it's just as you say like lifestyle or habits um in, in a much more global way and, and something that to be a little bit more sensitive in that sort of way and so hopefully um even when things are able to go back to whatever you would call normal in the future that that at least this generation of people that's dealing with this can can have that sort of greater understanding and realize that we that the best way to try to defeat things like this is to really come together as, as a single people and as a single populace and that doesn't need to happen just in the context of a crisis like we, we can do that anyway right like there's no reason not to i feel and, and and hopefully um this can help plant the seeds to be able to allow that to happen a little bit more in the future so that's my uh, that's my soapbox <laughs> um so I, I want to say um, thanks again for for all of you for coming in here. I wanted to give the opportunity for um, you to kind of speak a little bit, to, to kind of say how do we find out a little bit more about you, um, both in the context of Linnea, but I also do want to make sure, I, I want to make everybody talk and just kind of say how do we find a, you out, out a little bit more you as either a performer or as a composer. So um, I know Jean-Philippe, you probably want to go last because you have been doing a bunch of speaking. I want to give people the opportunity to be able to talk. So Marie, um, tell us a little bit about you. How, how, about, how else can we get to know you a little bit more and, and where do we find you? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah. How 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 do how how do fans of how do people that are now fans of who you are, um, like how how do can they best reach you or how what what do you have kind of coming up that you're excited about? Oh, I just released my solo album. <laughs> okay, but no modern music, only from Thierry Esquesh. <laughs> yes, no, but I'm very excited for this one in the moment because I have no concert like everybody and. Uh, to have a new CD is also a very nice activity. Of course, I would like to play some concert, but uh, you know, it's not uh, so easy, but it's um, a very exciting moment for me. And um, I just played a lot of tonal music and now to play this modern music and uh, especially this piece from Zeynep, I have to say I was very happy because for me, what is very in important on the accordion is to, um, you know, to find some new sounds, uh, to have some rich sounds, a lot of harmonics. And uh, we know all the accordion, we know it, uh, we know the sounds, it's uh, one of the most uh, played uh, instrument on, on the world you go into the metro you see accordion you go in the church you see accordion you go uh, in a party you see accordion everywhere and uh, what is very important for me is this ni nice and new uh, color from classical accordion and uh, with this very special timber and uh, i have to say only little uh, things for Zeynep that i was very happy to uh, practice and to search these colors with uh, Andrea and um, and Antoine also and this how it get mixed was very very interesting for me and uh, thank you very much for that because it's a very nice job very great job absolutely thanks very much for that we'll go uh, I don't know we'll go a little bit down the line here about Andrea like what what's what's something that you're excited about or what do you have coming kind of coming up and people can get to know you a little bit more um, as I, I have uh, to say, a bit the same than my Andre. It was very nice to to play your piece, Zainab. It was great because um, I loved the colors, and and I I had the feeling we we had a um, Zoom meeting, uh, and we we spoken a, a lot about uh, multiphonics and about. Uh, uh, possibilities and I had the feeling that uh, you really used um, what we we uh, about what we spoke spoke uh, and, and it was great so, um, I, I like the piece a lot and what I do I mean I'm uh, try to to uh, play a lot of uh, solo pieces uh, I'm playing a contrabass clarinet uh, and um, 
Um, at the moment, it isn't. Yeah, I, I don't have concerts. I have. Uh, uh, I don't have a lot of. Uh, I don't teach a lot, so I need money. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, uh, I am trying to have a, a yellow. No, uh, how is it? Um, uh, uh, so to to get money. So I, I I have an idea to to play a concert. So to to have a, uh, to play a lot of contrabass clarinet uh, solo pieces for contrabass clarinet, and I hope that um, they um, the government from Germany they they will give me money for for this project. So uh, yeah, I I'm trying to. Um, to give me jobs. <laughs> Absolutely. Friend. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's very important. Good luck with being able to get the, get money and funded for you to be able to do what you're doing here. Yes. <laughs> Keiko, how about you? What's uh, What are you excited about these days and what are you going to be, uh, what do you have kind of coming up or how can people know more about you? Um, I try to combine with the, your previous question. I think this last few months or the whole year was very rich also to understand what I really want to do. And I recently recorded a piece by Patricia Alessandrini for Contrabass Flute and Voice because I really am interested in using voice, like um, what is the case when you know, Sokawa's piece. And this is a, one of the musical material which really interests me. So I try to focus myself to really what, what I want to do either with Linnea, in which I'm involved since a long time now. And I have also my own, own ensemble called L'Imaginaire. And yeah, it's like the time to focus myself in a way to some essential things, personal essential things. And uh, now, yeah, as I said, uh, um, I'm also focused on like if exploring the new uh, sonority of contrabass suit that I'm still discovering. And with Linnea, we are uh, looking forward to the new piece by Raphael Stendhal um, that will premiere normally in, in Darmstadt this year. So he will use also the contrabass uh, suit. So that's like my next project. Absolutely. Very good. Thanks very much, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Zainab, how about you? What's, what do you? I mean, we know that your piece is going to be done, hopefully, in, in Darmstadt. What about what else do you have kind of coming up, and how else can people get to know more about your work? I mean, like everyone else, I have been very dormant this past year, and it was really great to hear this piece now in this format even, and I'm really looking forward to the live performance. Other than that, I'm really unfortunate to be enrolled in the doctoral program at Harvard, and through that, I have been able to be involved in certain residencies to the piece with Letting Ensemble and Talk Ensemble recently, which were like recording projects as well, and did a piece for Peter Veal also through Harvard, and that was a really fun solo piece to work on. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Darmstadt performance of this piece, and hopefully I'll be able to be there and actually hear it in person. Absolutely. I, I hope that you're able to do that as well. Uh, Jean-Philippe, do you have anything else that you want to say? Closing remarks? Well, uh, if, well, closing remarks. If, uh, I, uh, first, thank you for, for this invitation. It was amazing to have this pleasure of sharing uh, our, you know, our, um, uh, the music that makes us happy, the collaborations that uh, makes us uh, progress. So uh, it's very important to have uh, um, points uh, where you can share this with the public and we, we are also working with uh, Max, Maxwell students uh, in the last days was a lot of fun too and um, of course we have all these projects coming we'll be we'll also we will we'll be at Wyomo in the summer and doing 12 new pieces of uh, young composers all from all over the world I hope they, I hope they will be able to make it to France and uh, that we are going to collaborate with them with also some strange instruments like the show or um, the symbol on or even a tea orb in the uh, piece that was mentioned and of course um, 
our big excitement is to come to Louisiana next year. So we can't wait to be to be there and you know sharing the music and and the drinks and everything else that goes with uh, Louisiana. <laughs> it's gonna be a good a good time to be in New Orleans. Yeah. After, uh, after this. I think, I think oh yeah. Academically, we may get very little work done at school next year. But, <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. We can't, we can't wait. We can't wait. Absolutely, Max. Do you? I I know that you've all been more behind the scenes of like everything this season. I wanted to kind of force. Hopefully, th thank. Unfortunately, Stephen, who was also on the Niente Forte staff, um, was not able to make this because he had a schedule conflict. But I just wanted to make sure that I put all of our staff, um, the our faces on this finale concert, as if we could as well, just to know that um, th this is something that I started myself. It is my passion project, but it is something that would have never have been able to be where it is now without all the work that Max and uh, Steven has put into it as well. So Max, I also want to give you the opportunity if you want to just kind of talk a little bit yourself. Uh, what do you have kind of coming up and uh, and uh, what, what's what's your plans right now? I am working on a piece for harmonica and ensemble for myself and uh, Wayfield Ensemble in New York. So I have my first, I should I should be much further down the line on that piece than I am, but it's coming <laughs> off. Um, I'm having some, uh, I'm having some just intonation harmonicas uh, constructed right now. Ooh. I, I have one that's built and then I'm having another one uh, customized. Um, and then a bass harmonica to go along with Keiko's contra basic flute, which is, you know, funny. <laughs> um, so that's an exciting piece for me because I haven't really performed in the classical setting ever. Um, I'm just an improvising kind of blues jam band kind of harmonica player, but uh, that's what got me into composing and it got me into weird sounds. So that, that's a long conversation or a long, uh, you know, tangential talk, I guess, which uh, I'll stay away from right now. But I'm looking forward to that. Uh, that should be happening sometime next year. I'm also lucky enough I'm going to be writing a piece for Ensemble Linnea next year uh, for probably the New Orleans concert, but also um, a, you know, a performance sometime in, in Europe in the future, you know, on, on one of their future seasons. So that's, that's something I'm really looking forward to. Um, the the pandemic and my personal approach to it, uh, you know, I was, my artistic process was stymied completely by, stifled completely by all of this um, for a long time. So I've really only finished like one and a half pieces. And one of the things I started doing was just doing a lot of improvisations on harmonica. And so I'm looking at doing um, a larger group of just harmonica pieces with electronics or just amplification and pe analog pedals and stuff. So I'm kind of working somewhere in between my sort of tonal and modern uh, eight non-tonal musical spaces or whatever. So, um, but yeah, I wanted to just say one thing. I wanted to thank you, Mendel, for putting all of this together. Um, the season's been great. Um, one of the reasons we really tried to make this happen was uh, touches on kind of what Andrea was talking about. The we don't have a lot of money, but we had raised some money and we were very, we were hyper aware of the fact that there were a lot of people out there who weren't going to be making money. Um, and so it was kind of part of our goal, you know, in whatever part we could was to kind of help. I mean, we're not considered necessary in terms of survival during a pandemic as musicians, um, but no matter what country what the country did to take care of or to uh, handle um, the pandemic in their country, it seems like universally musicians were all just told they couldn't work. You know? It was like, um, so, you know, the U.S. wasn't very good at shutting down, so to speak. Um, different states were better than others. Uh, that's, a, that's a structural problem here. Um, but we also are very technocratic. We always look for sort of uh, big answers to our problems, and that's where we were <coughs> depending, I think, on vaccines to get us to the end. Anyway, 
we start to see the light at the end of the tunnel and this summer, you know, much more popular music and stuff, you'll start seeing more venues playing again, which would be really nice throughout the country. But um, it's still going to be a while before the sort of classical slash modern scene really, I think, takes off again. So um, anyway, I'm glad we were able to support and help out uh, in, any, in what way possible uh, that we could and also to continue the sort of um, promotion of new music uh, through this. Um, and getting to work with these excellent musicians. Thank you so much for the uh, concert. Um, and thank you for working with my students in such a sort of strange way. Um, so they're all, you know, they're all really looking forward to sort of wrapping up the, the wrap up part of this project. And, and uh, it means a lot to me as a teacher. So I really, I really thank you very much for that. So. With pleasure. Absolutely. And, and it is something that being able to put on this season and for it to be as, as successful as it was in, in what we could do was something that was very important for me because a anything that I can do to try to make sure, like music is such an important part of my life and new music is, is something that I am, I am such a strong advocate for that it, it felt to me um, irresponsible of me if I had the means to be able to help in some way um, to not just advocate for the music itself, but also for the performers that, and for the uh, organizations that, that really do their best to try to promote it and to advocate in a similar way. Like I, I wouldn't have felt good to do nothing and to not try to support the musicians in the way that we have. So it, it's very important to me and I'm glad that we were able to pull off what we were to pull off. And it was, it did end up being a lot of extra work for me, but it's, it's work that, that I, I love to do. And so hopefully we'll be able to take this and move this into the 12th season. Um, the 12th season, as of right now, we're planning on being a uh, live performance stuff, but we do also want to take um, some of the elements of what has been really strong about this virtual stuff and incorporate some of that, hopefully, into some live streams into the 12th season. So for all of you that are that are uh, following us and joining us in this community, then please make sure that you go out and support us both in our live stuff and on our social media. Follow the stuff that we have there. Go out and support all of the, the people and the organizations that are that are going out and composing music and new music in general or any music that you want or any arts that you want because the arts could definitely use a, a big boost even after as we get into the tail end, hopefully anyway, the tail end of, of this pandemic. Um, for my own stuff, if I'm going to do a little bit of a self-plug, um, in the middle of May, on May 12th, um, I've been invited to be a, the guest composer for a conversation series with this organization called Heartland Marimba. Um, they've been doing a bunch of uh, Facebook Live conversation series about composing for percussion and getting to know the composers a little bit more. Um, in the middle of May, I'm, I'm going to be a part of, I think it's their sixth episode of this whole thing, and I'm going to get the opportunity to talk with them and to share a little bit of the music that um, I've done, which includes a, a solo timpani piece that kind of... Um, launched revitalized my compositional career when i took a break from it for a little while um and also um a piece for percussion quartet that um has been is currently finishing up a post-production of a videographer treatment um, from this ensemble that i have a really good relationship with uh, with out in oregon and so if you're interested in that um then please uh look on my social media for that i am also going to try to do um take that opportunity to raise a little bit of money for Niente Forte because there's always good opportunities to try to get, you can never have too many opportunities to try to uh, raise more money to try to promote uh, new music and advocate for that. So thanks everybody for joining us this afternoon slash evening um, and for supporting us through all of our concerts. The official releases of these videos that you saw here today are going to come go up on our YouTube channel over the next week. Um, if you haven't seen all the stuff that we've done through the previous concerts we had in virtual season 11 featuring Megan Enan, um, Carlos Cordero, and, Ro and Roberta uh, Michelle, then please go back and watch those videos as well. They did some amazing solo work with some truly outstanding new music as well. Um, keep your eyes tuned for stuff that's going to be coming up throughout the next year. Keep your eyes tuned for Ensemble Linnea for all the stuff that they're going to be doing and upcoming because, uh, and we're very much looking forward to having you come back and be a part of an actual live concert here in New Orleans next year. So thanks again for all your time. Thanks everybody for uh, joining us and uh, we will see you uh, next time, next season. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mandel. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you. Mike. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.